The Arizona Coyotes took the L on Friday night. They lost to the Winnipeg Jets 3-2 in overtime. We're going to talk about that game, but it was also home opener for Mullet Arena. We're going to talk about the experience, the atmosphere, the vibes that we all got from opening night. All that on today's episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlock right beside me on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. I want to thank everyone for making the show your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. we got a great show for you guys on today. We're talking about the Arizona Coyotes loss to the Winnipeg Jets in their home opener at Mullet Arena. First, we're going to talk about the game itself, but we're going to spend the rest of the show afterwards talking about the experience at Mullet Arena. Um, but of course, let's get to the game first, Carl. Uh, a mm-hmm. 3 2 loss, but you know, like I think, yeah, which is disappointing. And it was the under, so um, you were correct on <laughs> on going under. But thank you, thank you. But uh, I mean, your thoughts on the game? So the game really showed to me how critical the Coyotes' power play is going to be. Um, This is one of the few games where they didn't score a power play goal, and they lost in overtime. Uh, I I don't think that those two are unrelated. Um, I've said in the past, I've written in the past, that the Coyotes' power play is not going to be a game-breaker for them this season. It's not going to win a game all on its own. But it can be just that extra little push the team needs to get over the hump. And it was really disappointing to not see a power play goal last night. Uh, Also, too many penalties in the third period. They took three straight penalties. That is not something you want to do with a 2-1 lead. No, absolutely not. You know, some of those simple mistakes are some of the things that that went on. Um, One of the things that... One of the mistakes that they didn't make, though, Carl, was starting on time. I mean, they kind of came out of the gates. They looked pretty good for the first five minutes. Yeah, the definitely. They they looked good. They stayed disciplined. Um, they did, like, everything we wanted. Um, they just, you know, need to – they're playing a 40-minute game now. They need to up that to 60 uh, before yeah. they were playing 20. So it's definitely improvement, but – it, it could be more. It could definitely be more. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that did that I did enjoy because, um, from that is the fact that, you know, if you can you can you can consider this a bad thing based off how the game ended up. But they went out with a two. They you know they came out with a two nothing lead. I mean, it ended up getting cut to two one within like twenty seconds after the second goal. But two nothing lead this to boot was is is something that's yeah pretty nice to discuss yeah uh i am very worried that this is going to be another year where we can pretty much track how well the coyotes are doing based on their ability to score the third goal um that was a big thing last season they could get the first two but that third goal always seemed out of reach um but if they were able to score it then they would usually I think win uh, more than half the times would win. Uh, so it's definitely one of those things where it's like, ah, I am just anxious to see if that improves. Yeah, absolutely. And I told, I totally get with, um, get you with that and everything like that. It's, they definitely have to work on some things because you go up against the jets because the jets aren't a great team. Right. No. And, you let the Jets come back from a two goal deficit. There's some yeah. things you gotta work on, especially on the fact that you like you mentioned, you know, not getting power play goals or um taking too many penalties. Like simple things. Simple yeah. things. They they took a too many men on the ice penalty 
and they almost got a second one, um, which is just ridiculous. Like that is not something that the team needs to be doing. Um, I, I, I do kind of wonder kind of what the issue is with that, because I noticed that a lot last season too. There was, there was way too many, too many men on the ice penalties. Um, is, is this just like a lack of discipline? Are they just getting flustered? What is going on? But that is like one of those calls where you just, you shouldn't be doing it. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about the uh, the players who um, did get on the the score sheet either by goal or by uh, by points, and really only one person to talk about when it comes to goals. Christian Fisher not only getting the first goal at Mullet Arena, but also the second goal at Mullet. The Arena. first NHL goal. Uh, yes. I believe the first goal period was in the ASU women's uh, game. Yeah, uh, I believe they were the first team, and then Josh Doan got the first NCAA. Christian Fisher gets the first NHL. Uh, good for him. Uh, I have I have been impressed with Christian Fisher this season. Um, if you go back and, and listen to me last season, uh, if you go back in my writing, uh, I think you will find that Christian Fisher is a player who constantly frustrates me because I want him to do more. And I think he is capable of it, but he in the past hasn't since his rookie season. And now he's just kind of like a better player. It it is great to see. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like he's definitely coming to his own. Maybe that contract, that new con that new contract that he got helped him out kind of boost his confidence a little bit. The fact that the Coyotes don't want to keep him around for another year. Um, Or maybe he, the fact that it's only a year is like, man, I got to work on myself. I got to improve. Get that long term deal. Yeah, actually, no, absolutely. That that's definitely another another thing, another way to look at it too. And um, I think we're just both glad that he's really coming into his own. You know, really improved over the last year. Yeah, I mean, three goals already. That is, last season he had five in fifty three games. He is at three in seven. He is halfway to his point total from last season in seven games. That is saying something. Uh, He still has a long way to go before he hits his rookie number of 15 goals and 18 assists. Um, Still his career high, but he's working his way up there. And what's interesting in terms of, uh, you know, you know, household Coyotes names, Christian Fisher was really the only one who you know made you know made that impact with his two goals the three other three other players who had been who received uh points and assists Jack McBain you know new kid uh yep. Patrick Nemeth and Troy Stetcher Yeah uh McBain definitely a player I feel like has like a lot of buzz um like well liked by the fans he's got that Not a household great name, name yet though but getting buzz I, He is only because he's got the same name as a Simpsons character. So we have gifts of it. Uh, everyone knows that there's a guy named McBain because anytime the coyotes play, there's a, someone posting a McBain Simpsons clip, which I love. Um, but you're right. Not, not a long time person. Like if you're not on social media as much, I'm sure you, you're not as aware of McBain. Um, and uh, I, I'm sure most people are not aware uh, of Stetcher and Nemeth. Um, but, you know, Christian Fisher is someone who's been with the team for a while. So it's great to see him being like the center. Absolutely. And you look at it, just, I get, you say, oh, yeah, the way, the way that was, was disappointing was, you know, with, with this first game in the home arena. The, you know, Clayton Keller off the score sheet. Lawson Krause off the score sheet. Um, and uh, I'm trying to see who else yet. Well, did that Dylan Gunther, rookie, I will give him some slack. But, you know, but I will. Shane Gossespierre. Shane Gossespierre off the score sheet. Barrett Hayton yeah. off the score sheet. I mean, it wasn't for lack of trying. Uh, we were seated in the area that the coyotes were attacking twice i saw some great shifts out of keller i saw oh, absolutely some, some good chances but you know when you're playing a team like the coyotes you know you gotta shut down the clayton keller line and 
once you do that, like it kind of opens things up for like the second level scoring. And, and I don't want to say that that Keller has been a disappointment this season. He went into that game with a five game point streak. Oh so. yeah, absolutely. Just it, it was, yeah, you know, you just set higher expectations for a home opener. Yes, and just like an expectation of a level of consistency and it's not going to happen every time. It would have been great if it was like a high scoring affair, but I think, you know, we talked about the Columbus blue jackets didn't seem to take the coyote seriously. The Toronto Maple Leafs didn't take the coyote seriously. The Winnipeg jets took the coyote seriously and that's absolutely. why they won. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that may, and it makes a difference because of the arena they were playing in. They kind of wanted to play spoiler. Um, and speaking of Mullet Arena, we're going to talk about Mullet Arena in a little bit. Um, because we can, uh, unless you have any final thoughts you want about this, uh, I, I do have one. Um, it was something that I, I briefly asked you at the game. Um, and the fact that there was an actual point makes it a lot more um relevant do do you start dyson mayo for the coyotes next game like over over nemeth he just got his first point as a coyote um i i didn't notice any major gaps in his game what what are your thoughts on that because that seems to be uh you know if they had lost outright if they had got blown out i could see starting mayo shake that up but they didn't what do you think um yeah you know i think it's worth giving him the shot you know like get him at least one of these home games right get mayo at least one of these home games see what he can do and kind of going back to what i said right and if he still does and if he doesn't produce doing one of these then you know that's when you start asking a little more questions yeah he, they have three more home games though. So, do you start him next, or do you think they uh, get earned a start for uh, the Sunday's game? Um, I, I'm gonna say start Nemeth on Sunday. Um, see how that goes, and if, um, and then after that, I think it's uh, was it Florida on Tuesday? Uh the calendar behind me doesn't say so looking it up uh yep florida on tuesday and then dallas on thursday dallas on thursday which is a game that uh i'll be returning the mullet for as a, um trading the uh the fan shirt for the uh media professional look um you know yeah, you're gonna wear a fedora with that press badge sticking out of the brim. Uh, <laughs> uh, speaking of fedora, that's another thing we're gonna discuss in a little bit too. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna get to the vibes of Molded Arena in just a moment. But first, I'm gonna turn the Carl for a quick word. So I just want to say that BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and easy, easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, golf, and hockey. You can head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. So let's now get to uh, our impressions on Mullet Arena and everything like that. The vibes that we got from the game and everything like that. Um, as a quick te as a quick teaser, I had teased everyone on it, so might as well just put, put that up first because of the fact that no, might as well just mention it. Um, you mentioned the fedora, like you just said fedora. And I'm just like, mm. like uh, the fact that Mike Smith was in attendance. <laughs> so, so we are reasonably certain that Mike Smith was in attendance. He was definitely uh, Mike Smith. Yeah, uh, he he definitely is looking a little. Uh, he, he's lost some weight. Um, he's 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 hurt and he's pretty much retired right now. So, like most retirees, he's gone to Arizona. Uh, he seemed to be really enjoying things. Yeah, absolutely. 
but it was really fun to see that. And, you know, a lot of people were there, right? A lot of people were at Molot Arena, and that's the kind of thing that I wanted to touch on, right? Because, you know... Frankie you Muniz some, was there? Yep. You had, you had all that, so many different celebrities, so many different media personnel, so many different former former hockey players. Um, and it was just the place to be. Yeah. I, I am really... I really respect the fact that so many media companies sent people to cover the first game at Mold Arena uh, because we we have seen the how some of these people treat things on Twitter um, and, and other social media, just like very dismissive of it, very dismissive of the concept. But when you actually get people there, when you have them like experience the atmosphere, like the the general consensus seems to be among people who are actually there they're like yeah this is cool it's it's you know say what you want it's not ideal if you want to call it an embarrassment plenty of people have but it's it's cool for what it is and you know we saw that from the media we also saw that from a lot of the player quotes too right I do want to reel um yeah no yeah you know, we also have those in too right and discuss that because a lot of people really like this. Everyone kind of accepts the fact that this is a really neat novelty. Um, and there's a lot of cool things you can discuss about it. Like whether, like whether you like it or not, it, people are going to like playing here because it's, you know, it's, it's going to be loud. It's It's going to be lively. Um, and a lot of things like that, like we got those vibes right away. Like it, it's loud in there. Absolutely. It's loud in there. Uh, because the sound has nowhere to go. Um, and we did get a lot of quotes, um, a lot of good quotes from Jets players too, who kind of like expressed the situation. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois said it is some of, it is the best ice in the NHL, which is great because I think a problem with Gila River Arena was their ice quality. Um, a lot of People complained about that. Mullet Arena does not seem to have that problem. Um, one that stood out to me uh, is something that Blake Wheeler said. Uh, let me pull up the quote because I thought it was a good one. Um, all in all, I think it was made out to be a lot worse than what it actually was. As long as you have a spot to put your gear on, talk about the game, um, it really is a beautiful college hockey rink. I've played in way worse arenas for sure. Like a lot of people were complaining about the the dressing room situation and you know it doesn't seem to have mattered. Like the team with the to horrible dressing room was able to rally back and get a win. What more do you want? Right? You know, that's that, that's you know, you know, that's one of those things to um and it's you know the new when you mentioned the ice quality and everything like that yeah like it's you know think about it, it's new it's different and people are gonna like like I said people are gonna like playing you like you mentioned that that quote it's like hockey like NHL players or just in general hockey players really don't care it's not like like if we're talking like you know any other sport like NBA or whatever some of them might be like oh no i want the best st stuff but whatever you know i mean maybe even maybe even not a lot of these players athletes just want to play in just want to play <laughs> and yeah. all you want to say they just want to play yeah uh, I, I do think hockey players are a specific kind of mentality because there is such a sentimentality or nostalgia involved in the sport in a way that I don't think there is for most other sports other than maybe baseball. Um, that's the one that seems to have the most similar vibes, but like a lot of these guys like went to college. They, they grew up in smaller rinks. They, they, they know what that experience is. And there's like, you know, to me, it's the same kind of mythologized past of the outdoor pond games. Like yeah, a college arena it's not the exact same, but it, it, it is something on that level. Um, and I believe I've said this in the past. If you are an athlete in the NHL and you think this is going to be your only time to play a game in the NHL and it's at Mullet Arena, 
and you are frustrated by that, that it's not at, you know, Maple Leaf, um, where the Leafs are playing, like the best top NHL arena. I respect that venue with like the best class facilities or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely expect um you know acknowledge that your opinions on that are very different than mine we are in different situations and i can respect that you feel cheated that your one game was in a small place but i think for a lot of people who do, who don't necessarily have that same concern they're just able to kind of like sit back and enjoy it um it'll it'll be interesting to see cuz it is going to be for 3 years like what is what are players' impressions of Mullet Arena in year two? What are there in year three? Like, what is the last person who plays at Mullet Arena going to yeah. going to think about it? Because again, we only have like very small sample size. We just have one game right now. Yeah, one NHL game there, and these are the kind of vibes that we're getting off just to start off, which is somewhat of a good sign. You know, people kind of are you know somewhat buying into it, um, and much as much as they can. Um, all 4,600 um, fans that were there seemed to really enjoy it, which, by the way, is a sellout. Um, everyone assumes that it is exactly 5,000. 4,600 was the exact number. but Yeah, uh, I thought that there was potentially going to be like less than that um, before, but yeah, 4,600 is 100% capacity. Um, if the Coyotes ever make the the playoffs i imagine you could probably put a couple of hundred standing room only tickets in there oh too. there will definitely be some standing room only tickets um yeah yeah that would that would be some that would be some for something really fun yeah absolutely I, I i do hope that they continue to um to make that arena better um when we were walking around the uh i think the walls were kind of stark um like you could do more um to kind of make it a, an interesting atmosphere like i remember all of the the paintings at gila river arena there's a really cool one of alice cooper um which i'm yeah. sure they've painted over now uh I, i'd like to see more of that stuff i'm not sure if they are but eh, it it was fun it would it would definitely increase the vibes yep in just a quick sec, though, we're going to do some maybe some grades on some on some things, some aspects of Mullet Arena, kind of, you know, get you get, get you an idea of how Carl and I view the arena and everything like that. Before we're going to get to any of that, though, I do want to thank everyone once again for making Locked On Coyotes your first listen today. For your second listen, make it lock, uh, game to game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the National Hockey League. Your local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Now let's get to some ratings or grades of how we think, Carl, of this uh, of this arena and the atmosphere, the vibes, and everything like that. But we'll, let's start off. Let's start outside, right? Okay. Ease of access. Um, you and I both took the light rail in the Tempe, um, mm -hmm. from different light, directions, from different directions. You came in from the, from the West. I came in from the East. Um, I only had to take a couple stops of maybe even just a stop. Um, and I was instantly there and then it's walk and then like you just walk, right? Like there's, it's like the access I think is incredible. Yeah. Um, I came in from Uptown Phoenix, uh, so definitely it was closer to an hour. Um, I looked at my phone at the time. Uh, it said it would have probably been like 35 minutes uh, to 40 if I had driven, so it's longer by train, but I kind of expect that. Um, I stopped at Mill uh, and just kind of got out and like walked the rest of the way. I got to kind of see what that's like. Uh, Basically, it's like uh, stopping by Westgate before going to Gila River Arena. Um, but yeah, it was super easy to get to, super easy to to walk there. Uh, I did hear some reports that getting out of that parking structure is not great, but it's uh, yeah, no, that's a that's a one exit, one entrance parking structure. So you're not going to have fun if you park there. Uh, I definitely recommend taking public transportation to the game, which is something I've never been able to say about a Coyotes game. 
Yeah, because yeah, because the light rail doesn't go, or like, there's not much easy public transit access on that side of the valley. Here, yeah. literally, you can. There's three stops depending on how close you want to get to that you can get off. You can get off at Mill. You can get mm-hmm. off at um, like, like Veterans and College right outside the stadium, right outside um, the ASU Stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can get off at uh, Rural and University and just literally be parked right, like right, like you walk like three hundred feet and you're there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was definitely a very easy, easy way to get to. Um, and yeah, I've I've been. Watching Running public transportation to get to Kyoto Games for forever because you know I like to consume alcohol at hockey games and driving while consuming alcohol is not a good idea. Uh, we've done some PSAs about it. Yeah. Um, so this is I th- I feel a safer way um, to have like a bunch of hockey fans go to a game. Uh, now. When the Coyotes build their new stadium, if that happens, uh, that is not going to be as close to as many light rail but stops. They'll have, the, they'll have like maybe the streetcar coming by pretty close, right? Yeah. Well, they 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 better think of something. Uh, otherwise, I, I think it's like um, it's a walk across a bridge. It's not terrible. I've done it, but it's not ideal. Um, yeah. So I, I, I would so- like to see them make sure that they can. Yeah, so let's move things off because we don't want to go too long on this. So, um, so ease of access, how would you grade? Uh, I'd give it an A. All right, we both give an A on ease of access. Uh, just general atmosphere inside the arena. General atmosphere, I'd say A plus. Um, it was opening night, so it'd be it'd be tough, but it was it was a great atmosphere. Abs- um, absolutely, uh, A plus for that as well. Um, concessions Ooh, so uh food wise they have uh veniza's pizza cold beer and cheeseburgers and a chicken place uh chicken place actually sounded really good uh i saw the cold beer and cheeseburgers it was sliders as opposed to full burgers um veniza's pizza you get a double slice which was veniza's pizza uh i will say that (laughs) I'm not the biggest fan. Um, I would like to see a, a bit more variety. I would like to see, um, you know, something uh, extra. Uh, plenty of spots around the concourse for, like, just bars. So you could get, like, drinks and popcorn, like, kind of smaller things. And you could see the game from the li- from the line. So that is always something. Like, you don't have to be standing in line for... 20 minutes and have just nothing to look at so i would give concessions a b minus a b minus okay yeah no i um i was gonna say about a b um because you know the options are you know they're arizona options um but yeah they're like there's only so much you can expect in a smaller venue right and so and and how many options you can get and the access for them He's like, yeah, there's, a, there's only one concourse. Well, actually, technically, there's two. There's one below, like underneath the seats. But yeah, like Gila River Arena could have a great like Korean barbecue place. Uh, Mode Arena, they, they're not going to have the the same capacity to to have a place like that be as profitable. Would I like Korean barbecue? Absolutely. Uh, but it, it, you know. I, I am realistic in my expectations uh, of what you're going to get there. Um, pricing is is what you should expect for a, a hockey arena. I think the beer was about the same price as it was at Hewlett River Arena or close enough to it. Um, mm-hmm. Pricing right. for the pizza was good. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Um, seats. It, all right. The seats were okay. Um, I did see some people there was some kerfuffle about bench seating, um, which there is some bench seating. It's mostly for the student section, but I believe you could also just have a bench seat. Uh, the seats we had, uh, the problem I had with it was like, it was very difficult to kind of like sit down on it because it's a a pretty thin seat. Um, 
not too much legroom. Uh, it's if you care about having a super nice seat at an arena, uh, I, I think you're kind of weird though, um, because it's not the most important thing. It's comfortable enough. Um, so I'm gonna say A minus for that. A minus. Does that include sight lines too? Ah. Uh, No, no, that doesn't include sight lines because I've gone on record of saying that I prefer the sight lines from like the upper level. I like that view. So you like the eagle's eye? I yeah, I like the eagle's eye. I like to be able to kind of like just look down and get like a full scope of where everything is. Where we were sitting, like you don't, you can't see the other side as well. You can't really see the flow of play in the same way. I like to be up high corner. Absolutely. Um... I guess some final thoughts, I guess, since we're, get, we're, we're, we're um, bumping out of time on here, but some final thoughts that I thought was really cool, Carl. Um, I really thought, and I totally forgot to mention this, but I'll mention it now to close things off. It was really cool that they kick off Mold Arena best way they can. First puck drop, Shane Doan and Josh Doan. Yeah, that was, that was cool. Uh, Josh Doan in his ASU jersey, Shane Doan in his very – uh, awesome Kachina jersey uh, for the first puck drop. It was great to see. It really kind of shows like what this building is. It is uh, the past meeting the future of the Coyotes. Um, I was kind of surprised that Doan was there because ASU is in Las Vegas uh, for some kind of tournament or it's game or tournament there but like you know like is, you're gonna really get josh Doan to miss this they 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 get they, they they figured a way to get it done yeah yeah right. i mean they, they they have castle like play a single shift to keep his iron man streak going uh i i don't see josh stone as the player who would like or captain who would like abandon his team so i'm sure that they worked it out in a way that everyone was happy Yep. Last thing is uh, Arena's got to figure out a way to manage the goal horn because uh, there is none. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least for the Coyotes. Which uh, I- I'm not sure why. Um, I-, I don't think it's was necessarily needed that night, but it, you, you want to have a goal horn. Uh, that's that that I imagine was like a technical difficulty. Uh, I was anticipating oh. something to go wrong, uh, and if it's a lack of goal horn, then sure. That's there are three. More, there are three more home games for this initial initial home stand, so maybe they'll figure it out by then. Um, I'm gonna have ask you now two things. First, I want I do want to get your final thoughts because we're getting into closing stuff. So your final thoughts and a overall grade on your experience at Mullet Arena. Um, so my final thoughts are this, like everything about this was better than I anticipated. Um, because, you know, of course the both, the both of us have been following the construction of Mullet Arena, um, just kind of everything for a while now, me more so due to the ASU connection. Um, and I remember going to see ASU at Oceanside um, and just thinking there is a ceiling for, for what this team could be at this arena. Um, going to Mold Arena for an NHL game and seeing, you know, it's not ideal for them. It is a perfect scenario for the Sun Devils and for Arizona hockey in general. Like, I think one of the first things that we did when we sat down is like, can you imagine the Frozen Four being here? Can you imagine a world juniors being here. Like this is just a phenomenal space for hockey. Um, And I think that it's unfortunate that not as many people are going to be able to see it because it's space is limited. Not as many people are going to travel, but I think it's all the more unfortunate that not as many people are going to give it a chance. Um, Because if you do, you will find it is, is truly a phenomenal phenomenally built arena it looks really good absolutely um and overall grade overall grade um uh i i i think this is definitely an a it was an a experience um it was super easy and convenient to get there once i was there i had a, a great time the atmosphere was great the concessions were 
um, adequate. Um, the, you know, everything about it was just like, oh, this is a really fun thing. If I had gone to a game at Gila River Arena that had kind of, you know, the same vibes, I would have said that it was the best game at Gila River Arena I've ever been to. Um, but just like, I don't know. It, it's great to see like a full package to, to not have anything that I necessarily have to complain about. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's like, you know, getting to the arena or dealing with traffic or, I don't know, just a less engaged crowd, um, empty seats everywhere, um, poor ice quality. Like this just seems like so much better in every way, even though it's small. Like that's the only knock against it. Yep. I'll go ahead and give uh, my, my own final, final thoughts in terms of just monologuing, but as, we, as, as, you know, transitioning to closing this episode, uh, I thought it was really cool to see just the fact that these are all diehard fans here. These are the kind of people that want to be there and you can tell. Um, a lot of us uh, ran into people who are followers of Five for Howling, followers of, of the Locked on Coyotes podcast, other podcasts. Fan podcasts who you know we embrace and we have we have had on this show, um, we've met some met it with some people from there, um, and just in general, just you know that kind of atmosphere. I really like it's you know that kind of intimate atmosphere that you're able to kind of like mingle with those kind of people. I really enjoyed something like that. Plus, what's really interesting is I mean, as I'm going to figure out is the media is literally we're alongside the fans, so that's going to be something. Uh, that I will give a report back and how it is on that side next week, obviously. But I really, I really enjoyed it. I would most certainly give it around an A to A minus experience because I really thought it was, um, you know, a really fun experience for a hockey game. Um, so, but that that that's on on that note. I will go ahead and close things off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a five star review on um on uh, whatever you are listening to. To like, subscribe if you have yet to already. We are available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Google, Spotify, and the Odyssey app. Don't forget to interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes, and on Twitter at L O underscore coyotes. I am personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Carl Pavlock is at Carl Pavlock FFH. Interact with us, ask a question you might have, we might answer it right back or in a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.